Welcome to the Cannabis Review. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We've got a great episode. We've got two guests to join us to talk about a great new book called Billion Dollar Startup. So I'm delighted to join Adam Moran, who's the co-founder of Hexos Corp, and Julie Bien, who's one of the co-authors of the book. Guys, how are you keeping? We're very well. Yeah, doing good. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excellent. Great to hear. Um, I think I can let you guys introduce yourselves to the audience and we can kind of get straight into the book and a few of the topics about it. So Adam, do you want to go first? Sure, happy to. Um, my name is Adam Muron. I am the co-founder of Hexacorp. Uh, almost eight years ago, my brother-in-law came to me at a barbecue and said, hey, I've got an idea. Uh, we spent a year and a half in my basement. We uh, built a business. Julie has been with us for most of the ride and uh, we wrote the book uh, on the story. So uh, happy to be here and share it with you today. And pass it over to Julie, one of the best writers I know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get you that 20 bucks uh, for saying that a bit later this week. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, uh, I started uh, uh, as Hexo's uh, first uh, publicist uh, back in 2014. I uh, basically had no intention of getting involved in the cannabis industry. And then I met these two crazy, hugely intelligent, di driven, dynamic, 29-year-old uh, brothers-in-law. And I was immediately struck by their focus and their in business now and all the rest of it. So uh, I hitched my wagon and uh, started writing everything down. And my background's in journalism. So, uh, yeah, the, the result was uh, was the book that we've got before us now. Excellent. So that gives everybody a little bit of a background about the book. So can you maybe tell me, Adam, the origins, how far it goes back for you guys when you set the company up, maybe paint a picture for the audience of how you came about writing this book? So, you know, we joke, like any great Canadian story, this started around a campfire at a lake. And uh, this one did exactly that. So my brother-in-law, Sebastian, was at a summer cottage and he was with a couple of friends, one of whom worked for Health Canada and said to him around the campfire, you know, it seems like nobody wants to be a millionaire because the federal government just announced that they are putting forward these regulations that will allow for the commercial production of medical cannabis. And he said, it's going to be huge. And Sebastian, uh, as the, you know, as the story goes, didn't sleep uh, for days. In fact, at a camp without a computer, without internet, he put built spreadsheets on sheets of paper uh and basically put this business plan together he you know did his beautiful mind thing for a little while and then later approached me and said that, you know we had been looking at different businesses to start and exploring different opportunities and as i mentioned he said this is it i figured out what we should do and my first reaction was cannabis are you kidding me uh, but i didn't know that the rules had changed i didn't know there was going to be you know a legal means to produce and so he said let me come over to your house tomorrow let me run you through some of these spreadsheets and we'll take a look at the opportunity and see what we can do and 15 minutes in the next day i was old and uh we we put our life into it quite literally amazing so that's a uh... A great little review on that, Julie. Um, what time did you come into the company at, Julie? Uh, so uh, my story was uh, sort of mirrors Adam, and in, in initially, you know, he he was hesitant about the uh, the whole cannabis thing. Um, I came in in the summer of 2014, and a friend of mine at the start of the summer had said, you know, the government is changing the rules around uh, who can produce and sell cannabis uh, for medical use. And I'm like, you're a lunatic. That's bonkers. I have no interest in getting involved in that. And then a couple of months later, I met Adam and uh, uh, I had looked into their company. Actually, we met through our mutual, at the time, our mutual accountant. And, uh, and I basically went up to him and I said, hey, I know who you guys are. Uh, and I think what you need is me. And you need me to do your tell your story and to get uh, the word out there. And Adam was like, okay, Miss Pushy, <laughs> I guess we do. So uh, we started working together. Um, and, uh, and I guess a couple of years in, Adam, like I had been writing everything down and, and you said, you know what, we should be writing this stuff down and uh, we should probably put a book together at some point. And so it had been always sort of rolling around in the back of our minds uh, to 
put the narrative together. And and uh, and so that's what we did. We started working on uh, another spreadsheet, uh, tracking the company's growth and the the big uh, high points and the very very deep low points as well. You know, okay, if I amazing. could just add to that for a second, yeah. one of the things that really said, okay, maybe we do need to actually write the book is when we went public uh, on the Toronto Venture on our stock exchange, uh, one of our advisors, mentors, uh, an incredibly respectable guy here in Canada pulled Sebastian and I aside and he said, you know, boys, he said something to keep in mind is that there are less than 100 Canadians that have ever built a company and lived long enough to see it become worth a billion dollars. And he said, and you guys have just done that. And so for us, it was kind of this, wow, maybe we do have something to share because, you know, we're just getting started as we see it. You know, we're, we're still young. We still got more business left in us and want to help other companies. So that for me was one of the big drivers for really getting this book out and why it's filtered with so many, you know, billion dollar tips and billion dollar lessons, as we call it, because there is an element of sharing for us. Yeah, I think I've uh, pretty much nearly finished the book after the copy that was sent over. And I have to admit, that's one of the things that sticks out is some of the kind of tips and advice that goes in there with the business, which I think is going to be invaluable to the reader, which leads me on to the next topic. What did you and Sebastian get right? Was there a specific moment or a specific deal that kind of gave you that leap forward into the, we all know scaling a business is probably the hardest thing, but scaling to a billion dollar business, I'm sure is a, as big a leap as you can do. What's the one or two things that stand out the most for you so far? One of the biggest things that we got right from the get-go and there in my tiny 150 square foot basement that you had to crouch in that was unfinished with cement floors where we spent a year and a half grinding out paperwork applications and financing plans was that we we lived by this virtue of making sure that we would always fill the room with people smarter than us at what they did and we knew that it would be impossible for us to do everything on our own and so we really wanted to bring in experts at each field i mean that's why we worked with julie to tell our story that's why we brought in the c-suite that we did and it was always about growing with really solid team that we could sort of say you're better at this than i am take it away yeah, amazing. I think corporate structure in a business, people getting that right from the get-go is uh, such a good uh, help for your business in the long term when you try to make it big. So where are we at it at the book at the moment? It's it's released globally. Um, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about where they can find the book or what kind of territories it's in? I presume it's online everywhere. Julie, do you want to let everybody know? Yeah, so it's uh, it's available on Amazon, uh, Chapters, Indigo Online, uh, BillionDollarStartup.com. Um, you can order it in through your local bookstore, of course. Uh, here in Canada, it's, uh, you know, um, you order online and you do uh, uh, sort of a pickup, uh, roadside pickup type thing. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's available everywhere and it's doing quite well so far. Um, I checked the other day and it was... Uh, uh, bestseller in its category. So uh, we're, we're quite pleased with that. Excellent. Amazing. And have we got any plans for 2021? 20, uh, is there going to be a follow up to the book, Adam? Is there, an, is there another <laughs> chapter of the Hexo Corp coming around the corner? I saw the share price is at a very healthy uh, number at the moment. Well, we're going to have to see. I mean, like I said, that this story is still being told. And, and that was one of the fun parts that Julie and I had in sort of putting this book together was where does the story end, right? When do we cut it off and hand it over to the publishers? And so we decided that the best place to do that was on Canada's Recreational Legalization Day. You know, and there was a lot of talk and a lot of it was sort of, I think, a little old fashioned or overly steeped in stereotypes where people just sort of assume that Canada's legalization day for recreational purposes would be this giant cloud of smoke, this huge party. But people sometimes tend to forget that we are a real company and we operate at high standards of quality across the board. And so, you know, there was no giant clouds of smoke coming out uh, of any of our facilities on legalization day. There were no big parties. We worked a normal day. We did a bit more media than normal. And, you know, at the end of the day, after we worked, we put our kids to bed. Sebastian and I got together in our backyard. And for the first time ever, we smoked a joint of our own legal recreational cannabis. And it was a, it was a great experience. Um, so that's largely where the book ends, though Julie rightly so added a, an excellent extra bit, sort of catching us up through 
what what had happened and taken place through some of the writing process after. Uh, but like I said, the story's just begun. Sebastian continues to lead Hexo in an incredible way. You know, by far still one of the longest serving CEOs in the industry. Um, I think that there's a lot more to the story. I think everyone's excited to see it. And who knows if there's another book, but certainly there's uh, there's opportunity because I think, uh, like we said, we're just starting. Excellent. Great. And Julie, is there any other cannabis media projects that you see coming around the horizon? I think we'd, but we'd all agree that there's a space that there's a, somebody's definitely going to step into is the actual media platform that everybody in the world goes to for the top content and shows. Who do you think is coming around the corner with that? Well, I think really uh, what we're looking at is uh, is Cannabis 3.0, where we're looking at uh, fully transformed cannabinoids uh, uh, being created for uh, APIs for active pharmaceutical ingredients and for inclusion in, uh, you know, b the big pharma uh, SKUs and uh, in, uh, you know, consumer packaged goods and that sort of thing. I'm currently working with, uh, with a company that is uh, focused on that. And I think that, uh, you know, already the pharmaceutical industry is uh, investing, I think I saw yesterday, $1.7 trillion into uh, developing uh, cannabis related products or cannabis products. And I think really that's where uh, the future is going to be when it comes to, um, you know, broadening out the consumer profile of, uh, of many companies uh, and uh, getting into some of the uh, demographics that haven't been, uh, you know, the rare or never consumers, basically. Okay. And one last one for you, Adam, what do you think of the European market as it stands? It, is it, the holy grail that some people are talking about or you think it's too long down the line for it to make sense it's the american market should be targeted ahead of it no i think i think any wise entrepreneur or investor needs to be thinking long and hard about europe i mean i'm particularly excited about greece i think greece is an excellent uh in an excellent position to be one of the european leaders in it there's some interesting companies there that we're friends with that uh, that we're following closely i think that from there i mean you, you've got such a concentration of population through such a unique governance system like the EU that once those products come in, whether they're made directly there, compounded there, or made elsewhere and brought in directly, I think that the market opportunity is massive. And I think that there's going to be a little more mainstream acceptance of cannabis across Europe than there certainly will be in the US. Uh, so I think for me, I'm certainly very excited about both opportunities, but I'm intrigued uh, a lot with what's happening in Europe and sort of the, the dynamic play. I think one of the fallacies that we'll often hear is to think about it as a single unit uh, and to think with each of the different countries that are in it and how they sort of play together. I think that there's a lot, a lot to come from there. And like I said, you know, Greece is really where I've got a lot of my attention for some of the production, for some of the leadership and innovation. Uh, but through and through, I think Europe is a very exciting and interesting market opportunity. Excellent. Yeah, that's what we think here in Ireland. It's going to be the same. And we look forward to having many more conversation. For anybody who wants to check out the book, you can see the websites down below. We've got three copies to give away the audio book version of it. So whoever can give me the original name of Hexocorp when it was first formed, if you put your comments in either Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching this, we'll pick the top three comments, whoever got in there first. So audio version of the book, Billion Dollar Startup is available. Guys, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Adam, I hope we get to talk to you again. Judy, you have a great day. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.